My name is Eric Warrant and I am a professor of zoology at the University of Lund in Sweden and I spend a lot of my life working on bogong moths here in Australia. At the moment I'm at my house in Adaminaby in the Snowy Mountains and here I've got a lab and we've been studying bogong moths here for approximately 10 years. At least twice a year, once in spring and once in autumn, we're here, the whole team. Hi, I'm Anna Honkanen. I am a Finnish postdoc working with Eric. And I'm here to do electrophysiology on the bogon moth. My name is Linnea Rosberg, uh, which is a very Swedish name because I'm Swedish. So I did my bachelor's and are now doing my master's at Lunds University. So what I'm looking at is sort of in the long journey of the bogon moth, the last, last piece of when they arrive to the mountains, how do they find the caves and the crevices that they're excavating in? And our theory is that they use their sense of smell. Hi, I'm Hui Chen, come from China. Uh, in the Nanjing Agricultural University, my major is about the insect migration. Uh, the first time I found a chance to work with Eric is about exchange program. And now I work with Eric and do some experiment about their navigation. This house we've had for a long time, my family, um, but it also turned out to be the perfect place to do these experiments that we've been doing for the last 10 years. Because the bogong moths, they fly over this area uh, both during spring and in autumn. So it's very easy to uh, trap moths using lights. Um, and then we use the, the moths uh, in our experiments, as we'll show you now. We're heading actually over to the lab. Yeah, I think yeah, this is our little gap to get in. This is our new lab that we built in 2017. And in this lab, we actually have uh, two setups, one of which is for doing electrophysiology. And electrophysiology is when you take a, an electrode and you can stick it into a nerve cell and record the responses from nerve cells in response, for instance, to different kinds of sensory stimuli. So we have a, a projector up here that projects images of the Milky Way. So we can turn the Milky Way and see what that single neuron um, uh, thinks of, of that movement. And another a stimulus that we are using is uh, um, magnetic field so we have the Helmholtz coils here uh, and with those we are able to uh, change the magnetic field that the moth feels when it's inside this setup. So in this room uh, we actually have a behavioral apparatus uh, which we use for tethering moths uh, and allowing them to fly on the end of the tether. Then we have a projector here that projects the Australian night sky onto a screen above the moths as the moth is flying. So far, we found some evidences uh, the bogomoth is going, going the way uh, under the Milky Way. Uh, the reason why we've got these magnetic coils here is that we've got not only the possibility to manipulate the Earth's magnetic field and change its direction, but we've also got the possibility of removing the Earth's magnetic field entirely. When we do that, we discovered that they are able to use the stars alone to guide their migration in the right direction, both in autumn and in spring. So I'm collecting smells or collecting odor samples in the caves using a filter and a pump and then I can take it to the lab and I analyze this. I will introduce a smell or an odor uh, to one side and a control to the other side. I will put the moth in. I will have a pump running through so there's airflow through the maze and then I will see which side the moth chooses. In this way I'm doing behavioral studies with these odors that I've found. So these moths are kept in in this box because we just recently picked them up from the estivation caves. And during the daytime they're pretty sleepy in there. <laughs> After the experiment uh, we can just take the stalk off uh, and after that the moth seems to be intact uh, but it has this bald spot on the back. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, you can even see mods with bald spots in the caves. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes if they rub against something, the scales just come off. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't seem to be too bad for the mods. Yeah. We can still, and we do release them back into the mountains yeah. uh, when we have used them. So we hope that they, they continue on their migration and get back to their breeding grounds and yeah. pass on their genes. <laughs> Well, actually, last year we had trouble getting moths um, because of the low numbers, um, because of the drought. Mm -hmm. But um, this year it seems to be an awful lot better because of the rain, so hopefully um, we will be able to catch a few because there's early indications last spring that there were lots coming into the mountains this year. The numbers aren't back up to what they used to be. After this trip ending, I will go, go back to Lund to do some a radar research and in the future maybe I, I will continue to focus on the insect migration. Yeah, this is a really attractive things for me. I think this is so fast, fascinating. This little, little moth flies a thousand kilometers without any help. They find their way, they then make it into the caves, they stay there for months and then they do the whole journey back again. I mean, they are tiny and they do such an incredible journey from the breeding grounds to the mountains and back. It's just fascinating for me, so I want to find out as much as I can. Maybe we could try catching moths at Dana's Gap tonight. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Cool. Which is nearby. And it's actually on a migratory route from, yeah. mm -hmm. from Victoria, so hopefully it would work. A Nobel Prize, perhaps? Yeah, I think that what, that's what motivates Eric. 